Hello everyone, in the last class we have completed our discussion on mixed design of PQC and today we are going to start discussing about the mixed design of DLC. So, what is DLC? DLC refers to dry lean concrete which basically is used uh, as a sub base layer in the construction of concrete pavement. So, dry lean concrete is also a type of concrete mixture, but uh, the mixed design process is different uh, as well as the proportioning of different ingredients uh, are also uh, different in comparison to PQC. Uh, you can say that dry lean concrete is a low strength concrete mixture uh, in comparison to pavement quality concrete. So, it is a zero slump concrete a very dry mix with a maximum aggregate cement ratio of 15 is to 1. Saying about slump of concrete, I mean this topic is something maybe we are discussing about the slump, we have discussed about the workability, but uh, maybe I, I forgot somehow to explain the process of doing the slump test in the laboratory to assess the workability of the concrete mixture, which I will be covering today. So, this is a zero slump concrete, we will see how the slump of concrete can be measured in the laboratory and the maximum aggregate uh, cement ratio uh, taken for the production of dry lean concrete is 15 is to 1. Now, this is something which is different from what we have discussed in case of PQC, uh, because in PQC we were talking about a ratio which is uh, you know water to cementitious material ratio, but here in the mixed design of DLC we talk of the ratio in terms of aggregate to cementitious material ratio. So, this is something which you have to remember that uh, you know th this is an important ratio uh, for the production of uh, dry lean concrete. Now, here water content also uh, we have to determine that what should be the optimum water content and water content is usually determined by you know looking at the uh, moisture density relationship. by looking at the moisture density relationship of the uh, concrete mixtures which we produce in the laboratory. And these mixtures will be produced at uh, of course, because we are interested to see the moisture density relationship, uh, we have to produce the dry lean concrete mixtures at varying moisture content ranging from typically let us say 5.5 to 7 percent. So, we can have a gap of 0.5 percent which means first sample we can make at 5.5 percent moisture content, the next sample we can make at uh, 6 percent moisture content, then 6.5 and then 7. So, at different moisture content we have to make the samples and these moisture content are defined by the dry weight of the solids. So, what are those uh, solid uh, materials? We have cement and we have aggregates. So, the uh, by th uh, this 5.5 percent is actually uh, by the combined weight of the uh, solid materials we use uh, in the concrete mixture. We will talk about the mix design uh, very soon. So, uh, in the construction as I said it is used as a sub base layer. So, if you know this is the uh, embankment, uh, we have a granular sub base uh, let us say for drainage purposes and then we have this DLC mix okay. and above this we will place uh, our PQC. So, this is here uh, and the minimum thickness for major road is 150 mm, this is the minimum thickness. If it is a minor road or a low volume road and we are having a provision of using a stabilized uh, cemented layer, then the thickness of DLC will be 100 mm, okay. but for most of the major road it is 150 mm. So, the guidelines which we are uh, discussing today is IRCSP 49, which tells us about the process of mixed design of uh, dry lean concrete okay, to be used in rigid pavement. Now, talking about the uh, ingredients uh, with which the dry lean concrete is made of, we have cement obviously. So, typically we use a OPC 43 cement uh, in case of dry lean concrete. We also have provision of using uh, Portland Pozzolona uh, cement and also Portland uh, slag cement. I hope by now we understand that PPC is will be made up of fly ash, whereas in slag we will have uh, GGBFS. The guideline also tells us that if the subgrade has soils which contain more than 0.5 percent of soluble sulphate, in that case uh, we can also use sulphate resisting cement or 
we can use Portland slag cement where the slag content or the GGBFS content uh, will be up to 50 percent. So, this is in case when the subgrade soil has soluble sulphate content of more than 0.5 percent. Uh, in the uh, dryline concrete, uh, the maximum aggregate size which we use is 26.5 mm and we have only one gradation here uh, in contrast to uh, you know multiple gradations corresponding to different nominal maximum aggregate size which we saw in case of PQC. Okay. Uh, and for the aggregates, be it coarse aggregate or fine aggregate, the maximum permissible water absorption is 3 percent. In case of PQC, uh, it was 2 percent and in some cases it can go up to uh, 3 percent uh, given that you know all the other material properties are satisfied. But here the permissible value of water absorption is up to 3 percent. So, this is the gradation of uh, the DLC as uh, given uh, in the guideline. So, you can see this is a combined gradation of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate and even in the uh, fine aggregate uh, the uh, specification mentions that we can use sand uh, of from different zones zone 1 to zone 4. Okay. Moving ahead talking about the use of mineral admixtures, we can use fly ash in DLC we can go up to 30 percent, so typical range being 15 to 30 percent. GGBFS we can use in somewhere in the range of 25 to 50 percent. OPC content in case we are using a blended uh, cement where we have let us say pozzolona cement or a slag cement, in that case we have to ensure that the content of OPC is not less than 100 kgs per meter cube. And the minimum cementitious material content be it only OPC or a blended cement it should not be less than 140 kg per meter cube. Now, what are the compressive strength requirement as I mentioned that DLC is a low strength concrete in comparison to PQC. So, the requirement of average compressive strength of 5 you know consecutive cubes that are uh, being tested it should not be less than 7 MPa. Uh, this 7 MPa is as per IRC SP 49, but the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways uh, guidelines tells us that the minimum strength should be 10 MPa. The compressive strength of any individual cube, now this is the average compressive strength, which means if we have 5 cubes, then you will measure the compressive strength of all the 5 cubes and then you will just do the average. But even if we look at these values, so as per IRC SP 49, the individual values should in no case be lower than 5.5 MPa and as per the uh, Ministry of Road Transport and Highways uh, guide book, the minimum strength of individual cube should be at least 7.5 MPa, okay, uh, where we are you know taking the average target strength to be average compressive strength to be 10 MPa. <coughs> now, uh, as I mentioned that the optimum water content has to be determined using the moisture density relationship, which means we have to make DLC cubes, DLC samples at varying moisture content and we will be calculating the density of the samples. So, this is similar to what we have learnt in soil about proctor density. So, we expect that uh, similar type of curve here. So, there will be a moisture content where the density is uh, maximum and this moisture content we are going to use as the design moisture content. So, we have to make trial mixes and the we will vary the water content say from 5 to 7 percent by weight of the total material which means the by the weight of the solids here and then uh, we will keep on calculating the density of the sample that is being prepared and we will plot a relationship which will look something like this. And then we will locate that at what moisture content we are getting the highest density. In the lab when we are making the sample for DLC we have to use vibratory compaction. If in fact in the field also we usually use vibratory compactor to compact the DLC layer. So, you have uh, the cubical mold let us say you have uh, filled this uh, mold in several layers and then 
you put a plate here and using a needle vibrator you just vibrate the layer such that all the material settle down into a dense mass. Okay. So, this is how typically we will do the uh, vibration. So, compact the sample in three layers with vibratory foot attached to the square or the rectangular plate and you give the vibration uh, after you uh, put in uh, individual layers. Once you have uh, you know made the sample, so once we have the sample ready on the first day it is just uh, covered with a wet gunny bag. The after 24 hours we will just take out the sample. We will condition the sample inside a water bath. Okay. So, this will be done for 7 day because, uh, PQ, uh, because DLC is designed for 7 day compressive strength. Uh, unlike concrete cubes which are usually uh, designed for 28 day compressive strength. So, we will after 7 days we will take out the sample, we will put it under the compressive testing machine uh, or the uh, UTM and we will measure the compressive strength of the samples and these samples will obviously be prepared at the optimum moisture content and then we will ensure that the strength uh, is within the desired limits. So, uh, let me tell you how typically the calculations can be done for proportioning the material in case of DLC. Uh, let us say that uh, you are using 1 is to 12 as the cement to aggregate ratio. Okay. You can also use 1 is to 14 because we can go up to 1 is to 15. So, say we have taken 1 is to 12 in our design. Okay. There is a requirement of uh, cement content. So, the minimum cementitious material content should be at least 140 kgs per meter cube. So, let us start with that particular value. Okay. So, this example is just to tell you how the proportioning has to be done. Now, we know that cement to aggregate ratio that we have taken is 1 is to 12 and therefore, the aggregate is 12 times of 140 which means this becomes equal to 1680 kgs per meter cube. Okay. Now, we have the aggregate is composed of fine aggregate as well as coarse aggregate. Let us say we are using a zone 2 sand, we, we have a zone 2 sand and after doing the proportioning of fine aggregate and coarse aggregate to meet the desired gradation range which is percent passing by sieve size. So, we have already seen what is the desired gradation. So, in order to meet this criteria let us say we are using 40 percent uh, of a sand and 60 percent coarse aggregate. Okay. So, 40 percent sand means it will be 0 0.4 into 1680 which uh, gives us the value as um, 672 kgs per meter cube. Now, coarse aggregate can be a single sourced aggregate or it can consist of multiple stockpiles. In this example, let us say that the 60 percent coarse aggregate comprises of you know uh, 50 percent of um, 20 mm aggregate and 50 percent of 10 mm aggregate say. So, 60 percent means how much total uh, total coarse aggregate will be 0 0.6 into 1680. So, this becomes equal to 1008 kgs per meter cube. Out of this 1008 50 percent is for 20 mm. So, 20 mm becomes equal to 504 kgs per meter cube. Similarly, 10 mm will be 504 kgs per meter cube. This is what we have got for individual aggregate sizes. Now, we have to make samples at different moisture content. So, in the first case let us say that we have already done the we have seen the density versus optimum moisture content relationship. And we found that the optimum moisture content is 6.5 percent say. Even if you are not you know 
saying that it is the optimum moisture content. Let us say we are making trials at different moisture content and the first trial is at 6.5 percent water content. Okay, say. So, for 6.5 percent water content, uh, how do we do the further calculation? So, the total weight of solid material becomes equal to how much? 1680 plus cement, which is um, how much? Uh, it is 140, is not it? So, this becomes equal to 1820 kgs per meter cube. So, how much water we need to add? So, water required will be 0 0.065 into 1820. So, this is 118.3 kgs per meter cube. Now, this is these proportions we have decided. Now, we have to calculate that in one mold or let us say in 5 molds, because we have to test 5 samples to ensure the minimum strength criteria. Uh, so, in 5 molds, how much material will be required to make the mixes? So, the standard mold which we are using is 150 mm cube. So, our uh, so 1 cube will have a volume of how much 0 0.15 into 0 0.15 into 0 0.15. So, this becomes equal to 3.375 into 10 is to power minus 3 meter cube. Now, 5 cubes will be equal to 5 into 3.375 into 10 is to power minus 3. So, this if you do the calculation you get as 0 0.016875 uh, meter cube if I think the if the calculation is correct. So, you can just you know cross check this value. Okay. So, uh, therefore, the weight of total material required. When I say total material, I am calculating the uh, quantity of cement plus aggregate that is required. This will be equal to how much? 0 0.016875 into 1820, is not it? 1820. So, 1820. This is equal to uh, approximately 30 kgs, if you do the calculation. So, you have to take 30 kg of the material and uh, in the 30 kg what will be the weight of coarse aggregate and what will be the weight of uh, cement. So, you see cement by aggregate you are taking as 1 is to 12. So, if I just do C plus A this is 1 by 13. So, cement becomes equal to 1 by 13 into 30 kg. Okay. So, this is equal to 2.3. 3.1 kg. So, this much of cement will be required. Therefore, aggregate will be equal to how much? 12 into this value. So, this is equal to 27.72 kgs. Okay. So, out of this 27.72 kg, fine aggregate is how much? 40 percent. So, 0.4 of this value 11.08 kg. Whereas, coarse aggregate is 60 percent of this value, which means 16.63 kg. In the coarse aggregate, we further have two divisions that is 20 mm aggregate 50 percent 8.31 kg, uh, 10 mm aggregate 8.31 kg. Okay. And finally, I am sorry for the space constraint here. Finally, the water content which you will require will be equal to how much? Uh, 6.5, 0 0.065 percentage in percentage into 30 kg. So, approximately 1.95 kg. So, this much water you will require to prepare these 5 mixtures and then you will have 5 different molds and after the conditioning period is over, we can measure the compressive strength. Okay. So, I hope that these calculations uh, now you understand and uh, you also will be able to perform the proportioning uh, for you know producing the dry line concrete mixtures uh, in the laboratory. So, uh, now we are almost done with the uh, concepts related to the mixed design of DLC 
as I mentioned that two tests uh, were left uh, which we need to discuss uh, in this lecture related to concrete mixture. So, one was the slump test which is a very important test to see the workability because ultimately uh, after we have completed uh, making the trial mixes what we have to do we have to ensure that the, the first proportioning which we have completed satisfies the required workability criteria say the our workability criteria is 25 mm plus minus 10 mm. So, we have to ensure that this criteria is satisfied. So, the question is how do we measure the slump of the concrete mixture. So, once we have made the concrete mixture what are the steps that are involved. So, let me just show you the slump cone. So, it is a very simple experiment we use a slump cone which is placed on a base plate. So, if you see that this is a slump cone the dia at the top is less than the dia at the bottom and then uh, this uh, it, it has some uh, extended plates here which will get fixed on the base plate. So, we have a base plate here and we will just fix our cone on the top of this rigid base plate before we start the experiment and there are screw attachments which you can see at the sides uh, which can be used to you know clamp these um, you know extended arms. In this experiment we also need a tamping rod of standard uh, dimension and standard weight uh, which is used to compact the uh, fresh concrete mix which we have prepared inside the slump cone. So, this uh, metallic mold uh, which you have seen it has a bottom dia of about 20 centimeter, the top dia is 10 centimeter uh, and the height is uh, 30 centimeter all right. And then we have a base plate here, the tamping rod again which you have seen. is 16 mm in dia and has a height of 60 centimeter all right. So, what we do in this test we will just place this uh, cone on the base plate we will prepare our concrete fresh concrete mix then we will start filling this cone with the concrete mix we can put in a funnel arrangement here. So, that we can just uh, put the concrete mix inside. So, this has to be filled in four layers ok, four layers and each layer will be tamped 25 times using the tamping rod ok. Then once this cone is filled with the concrete material the extra material again we will remove and just we will make this surface plane. Then uh, uh, you see we have handles here. So, we will gradually lift this cone uh, which is now filled with fresh concrete. So, you see depending on the workability characteristic depending on the moisture content and you know admixtures that are present and of course, you know various other parameters like the amount the, the gradation of the aggregates and so on. This fresh concrete it will lose its height it will subside ok. So, after you just remove it the fresh concrete will maybe look something like this ok. So, it will subside and it will lose its height. So, we measure the height from the top that what is this drop in height what is this drop in height and this height is nothing but the slump of concrete ok. So, this is the slump of concrete and we have to ensure uh, at the site that before placing the slump of the concrete uh, is within the specified range to ensure uh, proper workability characteristics in the concrete mix which we have prepared. Similarly, let us now talk about the compressive strength test which is very similar to the you know cement concrete strength test which we have discussed though the size of the mold was small there but almost the process of doing the test remains the same. So, here we typically have a 150 mm uh, cube. We in case of concrete pavement since our design parameter is flexural strength we are also interested to make beam specimens to do a three point uh, beam loading to assess the flexural strength of the 
uh, concrete sample. So, we can have a mold which is rectangular, we can also have a cubical mold if we are interested in the compressive strength. So, what we do of to make the sample again we prepare the fresh concrete okay, with the proportion uh, as per our mixed design. Then we will fill uh, this cube uh, in three layers typically and each layer will be vibrated using a needle vibrator. So, we will use a needle vibrator to just compact the mix and once the top surface is filled and the compaction is done, we will smoothen this top surface using a trowel. So, that a very uh, plain surface uh, we can get. Okay. Similarly, we can do the compaction in the beam also and we will make the surface plain. Then before removing it from the mold for 24 hours, we will allow it to set and we will place a gunny bag, wet gunny bag over these samples. After 24 hours, we will demold the cube or the uh, beam whatever is the case and then we will place this sample inside a water bath for the required number of days. So, say we are talking about um, 28 day compressive or flexural strength. So, we will uh, condition it in the water for 28 days. After that uh, period is complete, we will remove these samples. If it is a cube, we will do the compressive strength test. If it is a beam, we will do the flexural strength test and then we will check whether these values are within the specified range. Uh, just as an example, I will show you how the finished concrete cube and the finished concrete beam look like. This is a finished concrete cube which you see in my hand, 150 mm concrete cube. We also have a fresh concrete beam which you can see in my hand. So, this will be required if I want to measure the flexural strength of the beam specimen. So, we have now completed our discussion on the mixed design of PQC as well as DLC. And before we conclude our chapter on the mixed design of the usual concrete uh, materials that we use in the construction of uh, concrete pavement, let us quickly go through some of uh, the pictures which I got just this morning from uh, a friend from industry. And I thought that uh, these pictures might be very interesting for the participants to very quickly understand the steps on how the construction of concrete pavement is usually carried out at the site. So, uh, these pictures have been taken uh, from uh, GR Infra uh, and I am very thankful to them for sharing these pictures. So, we will be discussing uh, only about you know the uh, DLC and PQC because these materials we have discussed in this particular module. Uh, so, you see uh, this is the laying of DLC using paver. So, we have paver here and you see this is the sub base which is prepared and then we have a paver and we have a, uh, a tipper here that will spread the material beneath and then it will be uniformly compacted, okay? uniformly laid and compacted and you can see how the DLC mixtures uh, look like. Okay? So, DLC is usually you know uh, constructed to the full width. Uh, when I say full width, say this is the sub base. Okay. You know, earlier construction equipments that were required to construct PQC layer, they typically had a crawler chains on both the sides. So, we needed some space for the movement. Because DLC provides a firm base, so you know the DLC was also constructed, let us say that this is the PQC slab which we want to construct. Okay? This is the width, our design width which we want to construct. So, on both the side usually some offset was given and up to that offset the DLC uh, is supposed to be constructed. So, this offset can range from somewhere between 500 to 750 mm okay, on both the sides. So, uh, we need sufficient say so that the crawler chain can move uh, or the paver uh, can move to construct or to compact the uh, PQC layer here. Now, the equipments which are presently coming in in the market which are used in the industry, they are actually capable enough, they 
are modified as per the standard uh, as per the uh, requirements and this particular offset requirement is presently uh, no longer required. There are equipments which are capable of laying the PQC you know just by resting over the sub base also okay? which means that the DLC width of the DLC ca can be similar to the width of the PQC. But the conventional equipments in case of conventional equipment this is not the case and some offset is required. Okay? So, this is just for your information. So, and, and in fact the laying also can be depends on the width. So, if it is a conventional paver then the DLC can be laid uh, to a width of 5 to 7 meter at a go and these legs it can be extended uh, depending on the width of paving uh, which we desire. So, this is a close up of how the DLC layer looks like you can see it is more of a dry uh, concrete uh, layer. This is the picture of compaction going on in the DLC layer uh, using a vibratory roller. This is a finished surface of DLC you can see and in DLC typically we do not have longitudinal and uh, lateral joints. So, you know in contrast to what we have in case of PQC because this is a low strength concrete and we are not expecting huge cracks in these layers and therefore, the provision of lateral and longitudinal joints are specifically not required. Then in the initial uh, you know uh, module when we just introduced the two types of pavement I told that uh, in, in the uh, just above the DLC we also have a polyethylene sheet which is placed and this is done to uh, reduce the frictional stresses between uh, PQC and DLC. So, this is this shows the laying of the polyethylene sheet uh, on the DLC layer. After that you will place dowel bars. So, you can see that uh, dowel bars can be placed in this form also using dowel chairs. In case you know the PQC is to be laid using a slip form paver then we also have automatic dowel inserter. So, the paver itself will insert the dowel in the fresh concrete which is being spreaded. Uh, this is picture shows how the concrete uh, mix is spread over the polyethylene sheet you can see both these pictures and this is a close up of how what happens in the paver. So, you can see that the slurry is maintained being maintained in the paver and this is how the finishing is in progress using the slip form paver and after finishing the surface will look something like this you can see that this is the PQC layer. After this we have to also do texturing uh, in the layer. So, texturing is very important because it provides frictional characteristics uh, to the surface and the timing of texturing is also very important. So, this pictures it shows that how the texturing can be different uh, you know uh, in, in the first case it is done on the wet surface and in the second case it is done in the plastic stage. So, you can see very clearly that this is a better finished surface in comparison to the first one. This picture shows how the joint cutting is in progress. So, we have lateral and longitudinal joints I am not going into the detail because it is not within the scope of this particular subject, but these pictures just show us how the cutting of the joint is initiated. After that we have also to do the smoothening. Okay, so, this picture I think just came in from somewhere. So, it this picture shows the smoothening of DLC prior to laying of PQC. Okay, so, this should have been placed earlier I am sorry for that. So, this is a video uh, before we conclude this lecture. Uh, this video again has been uh, taken from GR Infra uh, which was prepared for the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways and then uh, this picture shows the entire procedure of how the concrete pavement construction is carried out. So, this can be a very interesting short video uh, just to see the uh, you know get an overview of the construction process. So, I will just play it for you. So, you can see the subgrade soil uh, being laid and compacted here. Again, you can see I think uh, the presence of a sub base layer over the subgrid. So, 
So you can see how the sub base material will now be uh, spreaded and it will be further compacted. Production of concrete mixtures in the plant and then this is being laid by a paver here. So you can see this uh, DLC layer is being compacted now just over the sub base. Curing of the DLC layer. Now you can see the slip form paver working for the construction of uh, PQC. These are the dowel inserters. You can see the dowel bars moving here because everything is automated. All right, so with this, we will uh, stop here today and we have completed our discussion on PQC and DLC, which are conventionally used in the construction of concrete pavement. We are yet to complete one last topic, which is the mixed design of pervious concrete, which is a very special type of concrete we will be discussing and this we will complete in the next class. Thank you.